This is Ashton Marcus, and I'm on location at Little Fish Theater for their presentation of On the Verge or The Geography of Yearning. Hi, my name is Ashton Marcus. I'm with KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine, and I'm here with Richard Perloff, the director of On the Verge. What drew you to this piece? This is the third time that I've directed this play. I saw it shortly after uh, it hit in 1985, and I've been kind of obsessed with it ever since. So uh, I, I keep coming back to it, and each group that I do it with teaches me more about the play, which I just continue to believe is, is extraordinary. I'm actually a big fan of your acting style, because you, you, you remind me a little bit of, say, a regional theater version of a Sir Lawrence Olivier. Now, wait a minute. You know I wasn't in this, right? Yeah, I know, I know, but... Oh, that's it's, very, yeah. No, no. It, well, first of all, your style, I saw your style in the play. The uh, way you have command of language, the way you have the, you know, focus, the way you have body movement. I see your form in it. Ah, okay. Well, I, I appreciate that, number one. Number two is, uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a creature of the written word, and that's probably a lot of what draws me to this play. And Eric Overmeyer is such a skilled writer. It, it's very precise, and... I think that's that's kind of, that's what you see is that attention to detail. You know, the this line needs to be played straight through. Here's where we take the breath. Then we go on. You know, you just, it's isolating the, the the beats and trying to create a, an informed silence every now and again. Yeah. Also, again, I noticed that it was almost like they were singing a song. The the diction they had, and again, from your style, because I've noticed when you act, I always look at your diction. Every per- Every person was almost singing a choral note, you know? The, the, these actresses, I mean, they, they have to be extraordinary because these three ladies are. I mean, that was sort of the, the, the challenge I laid down for them on day one is you, you have to own this language. You, you cannot be perceived to be struggling. This is how you speak. This is the level of, of your erudition. And, you know, and I've got three actresses who were absolutely up to the task. And so we, you know, we, we believe them immediately. Once again, I really enjoyed your casting. What do you look for in your casting? Well, this, this play, I, I wanted the three women to be very distinct. Uh, Mary is, she's the oldest. She's the sturdiest. She's a bit of a den mother. She keeps the peace because there's a little bit of friction between the other two. Alex is the rebel. She's the youngest. She challenges authority. She wears trousers. She plays with words. She's kind of a, she's sort of a hip-hop artist of her day. And then you've got Fanny, who's this crazy quilt of conflicting impulses. She's got conservative politics, but she likes to slap on the blonde wig and get a little flirty. You know, there's a, there's a lot of things competing within within Fanny. Those were the those were the three distinct types. And beyond that, I you know, I, I just took pot luck and, you know, these actresses walked in the door and I got lucky. This piece again, if if it weren't for these actors, these individual actors, it's possible I could have just t- totally hated this piece because it requires so much from the actor. It requires so much of their soul to be in the piece. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? I think that uh, one of the things that I, I knew coming out of auditions was that I had put together a company of four actors, the three women and my most versatile male actor, who were equally enamored of the play as I was. They, they really signed on. So I, I never had any qualms about that. I knew that they would do what was necessary to rise to the level of the material. Okay. Once again, I really enjoyed the piece. Piece that's very challenging. It took me into another world, and that's that's very difficult to do in theater because you can't like bring you can't bring Africa on stage. <laughs> you can't bring elephants that's, on that's, stage. That's what I love about this play. I mean, it, this this play was built for a space like this because you can't you cannot show those things in any realistic way. You really have to encourage the audience to you know to piece out our imperfections with your thoughts, as the chorus says in Henry V. We need you to play your part and, you know, give us the benefit of your imagination. I've said that to a few other players before. Basically, when they have to do something weird, like take a person to Mars, I said, you have to bring your imagination. This case, you didn't have to do that. The actors 
drew you into it. They actually focused you in with their words, with their body movement, with their expression. They actually were the ones who actually focused you. Did, it was, you did very light work when it, when it comes to bringing your imagination. Well, I, I appreciate that. Look, I mean, th- th- this play still has that effect on me, and I, I'm delighted to know that it still works on audiences that way. Uh, once again, I really enjoyed the piece. Thank you very much for being on the show. My pleasure. Hi, my name is Ashton Marcus. I'm with KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine, and I'm here with Don Schlossman. I have been acting for almost all my life. I started acting when I was four years old, and I've been doing, uh, I, was, I got a degree in theater, and I've been doing uh, a lot of theater my whole life. Uh, what was your part in this piece? Well, I, I play everyone that the, the three ladies meet. There's three lead uh, actresses, and they travel through uh, a lot of different places and times, and I play everyone that they meet. Yeah. You're actually kind of the man of a thousand faces, kind of like, you know, in, uh, in some forms of theater, you would be the Harlequino, or you'd, you'd just be basically the road map, the, the, the travel guide who takes you through the entire piece. Yeah, I, I, I'm like a, a signpost as, as they keep traveling through. I, I, I keep turning up in different guises and uh, a lot of different wigs, and it's a lot of fun. Yeah, actually, tremendous amount of acting. Being able to switch on a dime, uh, I, thought, I thought you were fantastic. And again, I always compliment the, that type of actor because you've got to play like 20 pieces, you change on a dime, different characters, different voices, different movement, different style. You have to bring someone to a different era just by your acting. I'm now in, I'm now in New Jersey, and I'm acting in New Jersey, and the only way you have a, a, you know, a signpost for it is through your acting. And it was done wonderfully. Well, thank you very much. It's it, it's certainly a challenge, and, and uh, there's eight different characters that I play over the course of the play, and you know, while the costumes help, I, I, I do make a point to try and, and really differentiate my physicality and, and my vocal tones and, and speech patterns to, to help differentiate for the audience who each of the characters are. So my viewers decide to come by and see this piece. Oh, what should they expect to see? Well, it, it's a very it's a very smart play. It's uh, the it's it's heavily based in language and and ideas, and uh, the, the characters are, are very rich. The the three you don't really often see plays with three strong uh, female leads, and uh, it would pass what uh, if if people are familiar with the Bechdel test. This play passes it with flying colors. So, uh, I, I and anyone looking for a play with with kind of contemporary themes and and uh, you know strong strong uh, feminist message that this is a good show for you. Yeah. I definitely agree. I, I enjoyed it, and also again, you don't see great female acting just because there are no. I guess I hate to say this, but there are very few great female parts. So we have great female parts, but also I don't think it was just a play for women. It was also a play for men. And I should also comment, you can bring children here because I can't say that about a whole lot of theater that you can bring children there. You can actually bring children to this play too. Yeah, definitely, and and uh, I, I would agree that that there are there are certainly fewer great roles for women than than there are for men. And uh, but as, as far as children coming to the show, there's uh, if they if they've got an advanced vocabulary, then then yes, they they could enjoy it. But there's cer- there's certainly nothing uh, off putting or or that, that wouldn't uh, be suitable for for families. Once again, I really love the piece. I really love your acting too, because again. Obviously, if you're going to play eight pieces in a row, that you, you, it's very challenging. You're very skilled, and I, I enjoyed. I actually enjoyed every single character you played. I can't think I thought one of them was boring. Even the kid who was who was who's who's in the garage. You, you think the guy just said a couple of lines there, but you really played a real teenager kid, and you really did did that part really well. If you can do those parts really well, obviously, I love the great the other parts you did where you played interesting characters of of foreign foreign descent and of, 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 of cannibalism and of other things like that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, was, I was awfully thrilled to be offered the part. I, in my, my teenage years are, are long behind me. So uh, for him to have the faith that I could, uh, you know, give the, the sense and energy of a teenager uh, was, was really gratifying to me. And, and it's, it's, it's an incredibly challenging piece, and I'm, I'm really thrilled to be able to be a part of it. Okay. Once again, I really enjoyed the piece. I really love doing this. Thank you very much for being on the show. Thanks so much. Hi, my name is Ashton Marcus. I'm with KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine, and I'm here with... Prisciliana Esparolini. I am originally from San Francisco, born and raised, um, 
and have been working in the Los Angeles area professionally for the last 12 years now. Um, primarily te uh, television film and I try to do a show at least once or twice a year just to keep the muscle going and this show is definitely working that muscle for sure. Uh, which character did you play? Oh, I played the role of Fanny uh, Cranberry. She is the most one of the experienced trekkers of the group. Um, she is married, but she has chosen to leave her husband behind, and not behind. He's he's okay with her going and, and exploring the world, but he she leaves him behind so that she can continue to discover herself and who she is. She can be um, a little contained. Um, she she likes things her way, uh, and 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 she doesn't really like to go outside of that. Um, until she is an, an encountered with this different era. And for some reason, 1955 be, seems to be the year that she falls in love, but she also falls in love with herself and, and, and that time period. And, um, and so, yeah, it's all about an exploration for her. I thought she was very progressive for her time. And actually, for any time. Yeah. For any time, she would have been a visionary. Right, right. I also found, found her a bit of a romantic also. Yes, yes. I think the, the wig brings that out in her quite a bit. It's, um, I don't want to call it her alter ego, but it's, it's, it's a moment and a time for her to really express that side of her, that flirtatious side that she may otherwise not be able to do back at home or even out in public. So it gives her this sort of this persona that that can that she has lodged you know deep inside of her but she can she can bring it out once that wig comes out too yeah if my viewers decide to come out and see this piece what should they expect to see um they should they should be expect to see three women who are on a journey and um there's adventure and excitement and exploration and newness there's a, a lot of you know because they come from 1889 Everything that they are encountering, which may be new to, I mean, you know, the audience knows about or they know the historical references, but they don't. They're discovering them along the way. And that part, I think, is, is, is very exciting. I, I love the command of language that the actors had. Yes. <laughs> Let me tell you, that is an exercise. This script, or Eric Overmeyer's script, is an exercise in language. Um, it's a workout. It is going to the gym for hours um, and, and just really understanding the language. I mean, there, I, I would honestly say that this script, uh, this play in particular, is just as hard or as difficult as maybe a Shakespearean script. Um, words that you think you may know or that I thought I knew had a whole completely different meaning, meaning in, in this particular play. Um, so yes, it was definitely a workout, needless to say. <laughs> Uh, actually, the way the way it was formed, I actually enjoyed the uh, the meter much like a Shakespearean mm -hmm. meter, but mm -hmm. in a different way. It actually gave me focus too, because I get, I, every now and then I get something real abstract where I'm taken to another world right. or another time. You can lose focus because you know you, 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 your mind wanders something like that. The language kind of kept me in focus. It forced me to be in the story. Right. I just right. couldn't get out of it. Right. I just right. couldn't, you know. Right. And then it also brings you back to you know just. Hit, you know, going back to school. I mean, you're like, oh yeah, Ike and, and Teddy Roosevelt, and you know, all of that. It just it rem the, the the history that he applies to the script. Um, I think will be a nice reminder for the audience. Just be like, oh yeah, I remember when that happened, and I remember Nixon, and I you know, I remember some of those stories. So I think um, it is a it is a lesson in history for some for these characters, but um, for the audience, I think it will be a nice reminder to to relive some of those moments that happened in the United States. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Once again, I really loved the performance. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you very much for being on the show. It was a pleasure meeting you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ashton Marcus. I'm with KACI 88.9 FM in Irvine, and I'm here with... Holly baker Chrysworth. Uh, I play Mary in this play. I'm a company member here at Little Fish Theater. Um, I direct a lot of the time, but this year I've gotten to act a lot more, and this role is the challenge of my life. Great. And which character do you play? I play Mary, who is kind of the ringleader. Sometimes she's definitely the oldest. She's not married. Her whole life has been tramping around and going on adventures. I think Mary is just all about 
doing what is pleasing to her. She's an equal opportunity person. She likes, uh, I think we discover she likes men, she likes women. She will go anywhere in the world as long as there is something interesting to see and talk about. And she uh, believes herself to be a teacher, so she will always have a story for a teachable moment. At times, sometimes I think the, the characters, the three women were, were very identical with each other, but in a sense, it's like they're part of a chorus, mm -hmm. so they have to be very similar, but they were different in a ways. One of them was definitely the leader, another one was definitely the romantic, another one was definitely the visionary, the child, you know, just going out there and seeking the world. Correct, yeah. We have to all come together in some ways, otherwise all you're going to have are these disparate people on stage. They all have this wanderlust, they all have this need to go out and see the world, but we all experience it in different ways and we all learn different things from it. I thought they were all visionaries. If they would have been pl placed in any time in the world, they would have been visionaries for that time. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you see how at least two of the characters um, are able to fit themselves into 1955 very well. And although one of them, my character, doesn't, she decides to go on, you know, they are able to adapt to whatever area they're in. Otherwise, how can they travel the world, even, you know, in their skirts and during the Victoria era? <laughs> If my viewers decide to come and see this piece, what should they expect to see? They should, they should not expect anything. Whatever they expect, they're not going to see. If they expect a Victorian adventure, they're not going to get that. If they expect time travel, they're not going to get that either. Just to come in with an open mind and uh, just have fun. I have to compliment the actors, all the actors on this, because this is a piece that if there were inferior actors, I would have just hated it. Because it's so incredibly challenging. It's like, it's a marathon. It's a, it's a grueling two-hour battle for your, for your attention. And the strong actors actually pulled it off. And it, it turned out to be a very wonderful piece. I don't think at one point in time I actually lost focus. Even though I was surrounded by myriads of words, <laughs> I was surrounded by myriads of events, myriads of myriads. <laughs> I, st I still enjoyed the piece very much. Oh, thank you so much. You know, we've all been challenged with it just because of the words and the language. But um, we, uh, I think, rose to the occasion and we expect to get better with every single performance. Okay. Once again, I really enjoyed myself. Thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ashton Marcus. I'm with KUCI, 88.9 FM in Irvine, and I'm here with... Branda Locke. I am an actress originally from the Washington, D.C. regional theater area. Um, I moved to L.A. about six years ago and have been working on the stage mostly, um, directing, acting, singing, and uh, occasionally dancing. <laughs> and uh, which character did you play? I played Alexandra Kafafo. I think Alexandra is a very energetic, very spunky, very progressive, and fearless character. Um, when I read the script, I really admired how brave she was. I don't even think she thinks of herself as brave, um, because she just is so willing to jump into the next adventure. For her, life is one great adventure, and she enjoys figuring it out as she goes. If my viewers decide to come and see this piece, what should they expect to see? Well, then they should expect to see three Victorian lady trekkers speaking some lovely, rich Victorian language, um, trekking through terra incognita <laughs> um, together, all with very unique uh, individual personalities, uh, watching them kind of find their uh, connections with each other as they go through jungles and Himalayan mountains and uh, stream, fording streams and just meeting all sorts of various characters played by Dawn. Um, and then eventually traveling through time into the future. I really enjoyed this piece. One reason is because I'm a radio guy, right? And this was words. It's very dominant in words in the way you pronounce things, like storytelling. Even in the old days where we, you read a novel by Jules Verne, it would actually be stories about the ocean, stories about seashells, stories about the, the, the sand, stories about the stars in the sky. Again, just words that just take you to another uh, realm. And again, in a radio play, you don't, get the, you don't get the luxury of bringing down stars or bringing down seashells. You have to use your words, your acting, your voice to actually do. And that's what I loved about this piece. 
So, so do I. It's, I think, what all of us in the cast have really loved about it, and it's also a double-edged sword because it can be quite difficult. Um, so many of these words are not in the common vernacular today, and um, I know when I first came to the very first read-through, I, <laughs> I felt quite silly because I uh, was saying things I, I did not know what I was saying, and the dictionary and the pronunciation, the um, International Phonetic Alphabet were our best friends. But once we, once we learned what they were, it was much to us, or to me, like Shakespeare, um, just using some of that archaic language, figuring out what it means, translating it into your own head, and activating those words. And they're so rich. It's such a, it's such a shame to see how so, how so many of them have fallen by the wayside. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I love this play so much, just getting to, like you say, activate, activate the language. Another compliment I have to give you is on the dancing. Even though the dancing was very understated, it didn't have a whole lot of pieces, there was a West Coast swing that actually was done very well, as well as a rock piece that was done very well. It's like you had very skilled dancers who basically didn't do that many dancing, but when they were called upon, it was actually very excellent. I got very lucky. It was a lot of fun to choreograph uh, both Don and Press. Um, I, I didn't know what their dancing skills were, and I knew when... Um, uh, Richard had given me the piece that they were going to dance to. I wanted to do a slow Lindy West and incorporate a couple of East Coast steps into there. Um, and they just picked it up so well and and they made it really smooth and and sultry um, the way that we were kind of envisioning the style of it. Um, the rock was, for me, just a fun little thing to put together and bebop to. <laughs> well, once again, I really enjoyed the piece. I really enjoyed you and also. Thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you. On the Verge, or The Geography of Yearning, will be playing at Little Fish Theater from September 28th to October 19th. For more information, go to www.littlefishtheater.org.